The day started out rainy, which turned to hail, but it didn't affect or impact the iron workers. They just continued on. There was a large gathering of workmen and probably some foremen on what now functions as a roof, but what will eventually become a fourth level floor. See the first photo. See also a second photo of the gathering from Don Ryder. There was a concrete pour on the car lane. The third picture shows just a bit of the concrete pump green boom arm to the left. Another portable office has been added to the office row bus lane. Since the framing has started, the big American crane has been extremely busy. Help arrived today. For want of a better name, I'll call it a telescoping crane. It says on it, Omega Morgan. It was put to work on the car lanes so we could not see what it was hoisting. The east driveway looks like it's ready for some concrete, as does the moat, and the bus turnaround is getting ready for a curb and gutter. Curious why the bus lanes are asphalt and the east driveway to be concrete. As predicted, the concrete pump with the boom was ready to pour the giant footings in the southeast corner. These footings are also known as the moat or the spillway. It took so much concrete that at one time this morning there were seven mixers on the work site. The first photo shows this pour in action. The second photo is essentially just the magnification of the pour site after the activity was complete. The other big activity was the arrival of the trusses. As you remember, trusses are made by combining various structural components such as struts and posts. They provide a lightweight solution for strength over an extended span. They are usually a series of triangles linked together. In the case of our middle school, they span the two large gym areas used for basketball. Both large cranes are used to unload the incoming trucks and to place the trusses where they are designed to be used. The third photo shows the trusses, somewhat hidden by all the other ironwork, beams, girders, etc. There were three or four more trusses installed by quitting time. As usual, they started late because it's a Saturday. Not much action, but there were two yellow telehandler, telescopic handler, rentals taking materials from one place to another. Later, one handler restacked the large wood forms in the south end storage area. One worker took a leaf blower to clear off the residual from the moat pour. See the first photo. One of the big boom concrete pumps was on site before the concrete was. The black tarp was removed from the steel interlocked strips, I've called them joists, of subflooring. The mesh had already been added. The result is called pan decking. See the first photo partially completed floor. See also the Google drawing. The total thickness is in the range of six or seven inches. The second photo is of the finished concrete floor in the background. The other major work today was on the mysterious extra large footings that curve around the vault and end zone. Most all the forms have been removed from the first purr and forms for the second phase are starting to be assembled. The third photo shows little of this but it does show several strange fixtures constructed to hold the large form panels. False work in place. A comment to Steve. See attached over the fence photo of mock-up on corner of Talus and Falcon. I've built or helped build many mock-ups and several models, and I've never seen anything like that. It's like saying, quote, we know what standard engineering and architectural standards are, but we want to make sure that our the school district's design will comply. Or, worse yet, quote, there is so much new and different in this design, we have no idea if it will comply with today's architectural and engineering specs, unquote. Well, they've spent so much money so far, why start saving money now? Thanks for the heads up. The bus turnaround area got its curbs and gutters today. See the first photo. The big white national crane was back to help in the job of moving the used forms to be used again in the creation of the big retaining wall at the south end of the property. See the second photo. Two or possibly three propane tanks were delivered this morning. A concrete boom pumper was here early and ready to start another big pour, this time right under the fourth floor level. While this was going on, the floor space to the south of Mundy's Pour was being created with or for the pan decking. This can be seen in the first photo. Note the labels. The white American crane was moved to a more useful spot above the vault. 
It was used to load the false work forms to be used in a later to be determined pour. The form of the plywood structure should dictate the function of what they are building. But so far, even when I've been told, it remains a mystery to me. Something much more understandable is the completion of the gutters and curbs for the bus turnaround lanes. The second photo shows them nicely. The shape of the combined curb and gutter varies, presumably to let a landscape vehicle drive over the curb where necessary. Uh, but you haven't seen that word for a while. When we were kids, it was very popular. It was swell. Now there's a word. Today was all about doing the same jobs that were done the day before and maybe the day before that. Ditto jobs. One thing that is new is another crazy use for the big mystery art at the South End. It's an amphitheater or theater in the half round. No? Well, that's a better guess than a spillway or a moat. See the photo. Yesterday, not that much to write about. Today, lots. The most significant and interesting event was the transfer of concrete slurry from one mixer truck to a pump boom and then on to another pump boom. The reason for this extra step and extra pump boom was that they just could not get the concrete mixer any closer to the target, the place where they wanted the concrete to go. The photos show first the location on the site of the overall pour, second a close-up of the transfer of the slurry. No one is watching that it goes into the second hopper, but everybody is watching as it goes to its destination. The third photo is a close-up of the hole where the concrete is going. I have no idea why four or five guys are so interested in what's down there. There is also activity in the bus turnaround area and in the classroom area. The surveyors were active again, which is common, but more about that later. 